Brilliant. It is such a pleasure to welcome you to the Road Less Travelled podcast. Um, I'll do a quick intro of you and then I would love you to tell the viewers uh, where you are. So uh, for those of you who yeah. don't know Bronwyn, Bronwyn was a banker for 20 years before quitting the rat race and turning to property. Aside from being a property investor, Bronwyn is also a coach and published author, which we'll talk more about later in the podcast. Um, now, my background feels uh, very dull compared to yours. Um, could you share with everyone where you are? Okay, I'm in Zanzibar in Tanzania. It's an island, if you don't know Africa, it's an island off the northeast coast of Tanzania, not far from Kenya. It's a beautiful tropical place and uh, yeah, it's very, very warm at the moment. Yeah, and we, we were talking off camera that uh, there's a swimming pool right, right just behind you. And uh, yes, yeah, so I stand between you yes, and the swimming pool. Yes. So uh, no pressure, Charlie, no pressure. Oh, mm -hmm. look at that. If you're <laughs> listening on Spotify, I'm afraid you are missing out. You, you will have to go over to YouTube and just have a look because you are missing out on this incredible background. Um, brilliant. So. Bronwyn, you have uh, a very interesting career and um, we obviously met because actually you reached out to me through through YouTube um, so thank you for doing that yes. and and thank you as well for sharing me your your book and we'll talk a lot about this as we go through the podcast um, but I, sure. I wanted to yeah. sort of pick up on the piece first that you were you were in banking for, for 20 years before before yeah. making making moves so no one can say you didn't try the corporate life right no, no one can say you didn't give that a really good go <laughs> Um, but at what Indeed. point was it that you started to think, maybe this isn't quite for me anymore, maybe I need to make a change? Mm. Well, 20, 20 years, 21 years is a whole lifetime, isn't it? And mm. I think I started in, my, started in my career straight from university. And I thought, oh, I'll do a few years with Lloyds <laughs> Bank and then I'll move on to something more exciting. And, you know, I just stayed, but I, I went to lots of different departments and I was always mm -hmm. challenged and there was always something new I could step up to. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, having kids and my parents get sort of becoming older, you start to reflect a little bit on where you spend your time. There's mm -hmm. a, a lot of guilt there. <laughs> and... Um, I, I must admit, I got to the point in my career where I was actually very senior. Uh, I was the first woman area director in, in the business banking side. And again, I loved that responsibility. But then I was told I had to commute to London, you know, mm. at my level of seniority. <clears throat> I couldn't live near home anymore. Um, I needed to get on that train. And that's what I did because, you know, loyal to my career and all that. But then I was told I couldn't take my pension until I was 67. And I was started to think, hang on a minute, <laughs> 67, do I want to be in this organization for another 20 years? Mm. Or, you know, what do I want to do with my life? Um, and I think, you know, the kids were, Robert was at university and Laura was in, into college thinking about their own careers. And uh, my husband also was commuting to London. <laughs> and we had no time, we had no time yeah. for each other. We had no time for the family. So it, it came a point we just, I just thought, what, what are we going to do? Um, what can we do? And how can we create freedom? So rather mm -hmm. than looking at another job, and I did look at Accenture and I was offered a job <laughs> and I looked at different, different careers, but each time I thought, nah, it's going to be, it's going to eat up more of my time. Um, so what could I do to actually get the freedom in my mm -hmm. life and still have an income? Yes. And that was the big thing. The catalyst was finding, finding somebody who did property investing. And, and I read a book, funnily enough, <laughs> and um, I thought, well, maybe this could work. Mm. So, yeah, I, I did enjoy my career at times. It was very pressurized at senior levels yeah. and I was earning a really good salary. So starting to think, well, do I still need to earn that much? Yeah. What do I get for my job? Can I get that in a different way? So, yeah, just that catalyst of not being able to take my pension till 67, thinking, you know, maybe there is another way, just sparked my research, really. I think this is a really interesting time to be having this conversation because if you if you look around, it's the the great resignation right now. And I think there's the market, the job market also is also very hot. So there's a lot of people chasing yes. money, but less people chasing value. Yes. And thinking about what do you get mm. in return for your for your money 
And I think, you know, what people, yeah. people talk about multiple streams of income and I'm a big believer in that because I'm a big believer in, in financial security. But people are like, mm. well, what do you, what do you, what do you buy with all the money? And you're like, your time back. <laughs> that is ultimately what, that's the only thing yeah. of real value that you can ultimately buy yes. is your time. Yes. And I think um, we'll talk yeah. more about sort of property investing in your in the context of your book in a moment. But was there something about property investing specifically that that caught you, or were you just looking for sort of anything and and this sparked your interest first? Well, first of all, it was you know we had some savings, we had a little bit of inheritance, and we had lots of bank shares because mm -hmm. <laughs> you get all these share options, don't you? And these shares were worth ten pounds at one point when we merged with TSB and all that history. And I was so reluctant to, to sell them at anything less than sort of five pounds. But, but my husband being a prag, pragmatist and sensibly said, well, I tell you what, if we sell them all, I think they were worth 50p. It's <laughs> actually quite a lot of money. <laughs> so I just bit the bullet. We bit the bullet and we like sold those shares and we went out and, and looked at some properties mm -hmm. in Winchester because I live down in Hampshire when I'm in the UK. Um, yeah. And we looked at Winchester because that's where I stood on that platform every day commuting. And I thought this is a great place to rent for people to rent property. So yeah. we, uh, on the spur of the moment, went out, look, went to a few state agents, um, bought a flat, <laughs> rented it for the following Monday. Wow. The, the agent did all the mortgage and everything for us, insurance management, and hey presto, we were suddenly landlords. So there was a bit of urgency there. Um, we didn't know anything at that point, and that's when I bought the books that mm -hmm. I bought. Um, and the one book that resonated was called Property Magic by Simon Zucci. And I read it and I read it. Well, no, John read it first, and he said, actually, this is really good. <laughs> so, so I read it and thought, it probably won't work in the South, but his whole mantra was creating freedom. So it yep. was never about being a landlord and creating another job. Mm. He, he, was, um, he, he, he worked for Cadbury, so he also was in corporate job prior to, to doing property. And he recognized that actually, if you get other people to manage your property rentals, then you have your time back. Yep. And he was teaching this stuff. So I went along to one of his meetings and the rest is history really, went and learnt with him as an expert. I resonated with him, his values. His course wasn't cheap, however, but we just thought, well, if we're going to do this properly, we need to learn with an expert. Yeah. And it was very much that time thing, you know, as we talked about. Mm. Time is your most precious asset. And it was that recognition that my goodness me, you know, at our age, in our 40s at that point, it was, hmm, how much time when we're healthy, fit, yes. have we got to do the stuff we want to do in our lives? And, um, you know, the reason why comes out of that. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it was all about time and finding somebody that actually has made this work for them and has created freedom. It was that inspiration that got us, you know, focused on why, why don't we give this a go? Yeah. And it sounds, <laughs> excuse me, it sounds to me like you surround yourself with people who have similar values to you. And this struck yeah. out to me when I read your book as well. And I, what I wrote on the Amazon review was, uh, come for the property advice, stay for the life advice. Because as someone who's kind of at the moment just deciding whether they think property investment might kind of be for them in the future, um, mm. This was of interest to me on the topic, but actually what I realised is there's a lot of very valuable life advice that, that goes through this. And the key thing that jumped out to me yeah. is it's knowing why. And that's yeah. important because it helps you keep everything else in perspective. I uh, am I, you know, I did this because I wanted freedom. Hang on, I'm just turning this into another job and I'm not earning as much by putting mm. the same hours in. Hang on, something's wrong here. Mm. But, but also yeah. um, knowing your why, because you didn't just hit the resign button and launch into property yeah. you actually had a period was it one or two years where these yeah, overlapped because you went you went via yeah. the nhs as well right so yes you've, you've tried a few things to sort of find your find your why could you maybe yes. expand a little bit on your kind of path around what kind of when you made you go from banking to the nhs to finally yes. going no no neither of those is right for me <laughs> indeed well I turned down a job at Accenture um, yeah. first of all and I thought no it's not going to work for me and I, I joined the NHS because I thought that by working closer to home I would have more time but also it was a value thing you know I, 
think the NHS principles are really good, yeah. but what they lacked was um, business acumen, you know, leadership mm -hmm. and wider, wider breadth of knowledge, really, because a lot of people in the NHS do work their way up. So, they, you know, they may yeah. be clinicians, they may, they, may, they may have come in at a junior level, but what they haven't got is the corporate experience mm -hmm. externally. So I came in on a gateway to leadership thing that, you know, was a special mm -hmm. recruitment exercise. Um, and I thought, great, because it gives me a level of income, um, but also parachuted us into fairly senior roles. And I loved it. I really did enjoy it. Um, but it got to it also got to the point where I put my heart and soul into it. And I was mm -hmm. working longer hours than I was when I was in banking. Uh, Which is saying less. something. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, and I, you know, I, I look back. I did five years with the NHS. I look back mm. with, you know, with an interesting perspective, and I, I've learned a huge amount, and I made a massive difference. I've saved millions of pounds to the area where I where I worked. So, so I hold that there. But it was so mm. frustrating, so bureaucratic, and so political that I felt that it, it was just draining me of everything. Yeah. So, long story short, yeah, we we thought let's do this property thing is it going to change our lives can we achieve what Simon Zucci you know says is possible so could we achieve that £60,000 income a year was was the what, what his sort of flagship says mm -hmm. if you come and do my mastermind program this is what you could achieve yeah. so we just went well okay <clears throat> let's give it a go so working both of us working um, we thought if we can achieve that goal one of us could give up our mm -hmm. jobs at that point and have more time. So time, <clears throat> when you're learning another career, when you're learning uh, a lot of new stuff, yeah. even though it's finance related, you know, you, again, you've got to balance that time because that education, but also making it happen and doing, <laughs> taking action takes time as well. So between my husband as well, between the two of us, we, we launched ourselves straight into this um, learning and education. So once a month up in Birmingham, but also coaching twice a month. But we had separate coaches, so we were coached separately. Which adds um, a lot of anyway. Yeah, well, it does, because we're completely different people. Um, but yeah, finding that time was really important whilst mm -hmm. we were working. So that was really the quite, quite difficult. But again, part of our education was, you know, where do we spend our time currently? Yeah. So you know, when you come in and you're exhausted and you think, crikey, you know, I'll, um, you know, I'll put the TV on or, I'll, yeah. um, you know, I'll, I'll have a glass of wine or whatever, you know, I would get up earlier in the morning and I would mm. actually stop doing, I stopped reading newspapers, I stopped watching television and I would then go, great, now I'm going to do the fun stuff and I'll yeah. carry on learning. Um, and also, yeah, John gave up his job after the first year. So we were, we were very successful with our taking action we actually you know immersed ourselves in it and we created a really good income at that point so John gave up his job after one year and then I carried on but I went down to three days a week yeah so I was able to I was flexible I told work what I was doing so yeah. that they knew um, and also going down to three days a week just gave me that balance of income um, and security because for me, I was I was really scared of giving up my job. Yes. It's quite a quite a thing, you know, when you've worked your whole life. Um, just being able to make a decision like that. So I I determined. I handed my notice in, and I was going to leave at the end of the calendar year, so Christmas, which made it easier because everybody was celebrating. Everybody was going off on holiday. It wasn't a big deal. Yeah, you could, so just, could sort of just slide up slip away. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah so it, it worked it worked well but what I what I forgot to mention actually which I think is quite important um is work the banking role that I was in they were we it was there was a big change happening we were taken over or we know we were merging with HSBC and it was a big time of change and people were asking and as a senior person I was asking my staff who wanted to put their hand up for potential mm. voluntary redundancy yeah and in my head, I was like, hmm, that would be good. <laughs> and I thought Ooh. I never thought I'd say that. And yeah. I did. You know, but at, at the level I was at and I was I was quite successful, they didn't want to give me that chance. 
Um, it was worth a try. <laughs> well, I did. I, I persevered. I had a skiing accident. And, it, you know, it's funny, isn't it, how life things happen for a reason. I had a skiing accident. I, I ruptured my ACL in my knee. I couldn't get, oh. I couldn't commute. So I worked from home for a while. And that's when I did my research. <laughs> so mm. I researched the NHS. I researched uh, the, the redundancy op options. And I stuck it out. And I, after nine months, eventually, I, I took a, a, a redundancy from the bank. And that just, that was what changed everything for me. Yes. Because, you know, leaving a, a, a quite a large job at a high salary was too big a step for me. Yeah. Um, stepping down to the NHS and having a bit of redundancy was, uh, was great. So I thought I'd just slip that one in. That was, that was some time before we found property, though. So, yeah, yeah I, th I think that's I think that's really important. Um, and I've noticed that the, the sort of the pattern in all the guests I've spoken to so far is there has been some kind of triggering event yeah. that has yeah, made people step back and question things and go, hmm, yeah. OK, maybe there's another way. <laughs> I wrote down some words yeah. as you talked, and this kind of gives you a view on how how scatty my brain is honesty time why tv um <laughs> i think the key thing here around, <laughs> yes. time, around time is there might be people listening going oh my gosh so if i want to get into property investment i can never watch tv again and that's i don't think that's what you're saying <laughs> i think what you're saying no, is not at all. the way <laughs> the way time management works is if you want it enough then you yes. will sacrifice the things that look like short-term yes. pleasures which are in fact vacuous mm. but we'll get into that another time mm. but Mm. the you those are the things you sacrifice first mm. and if you want yeah. them enough you will do it yes yes absolutely you know those important things like yoga for me and keep fit mm. and the social things are really important so don't yeah. give those things up but it's the things that actually don't seem to be adding value to you yes. I mean don't get me wrong I did watch tv and you know watch a film or whatever um but th then comes along the reason why and the yeah. reason why drives you um and the reason why for both of us was was creating time to do other things and those other things are what absolutely drives you um and of course it's family and everyone you know when I coach a lot of people in this but um, people always say well I'm my reason why is my family but you go yeah of course it is and that's taken for granted so yes. don't use that because it doesn't drive you particularly yeah. um but for me it was it was um, being able to do the things that I've always wanted to do in life and and that for me it's uh, wildlife conservation being able to work in Africa volunteer for organizations mm -hmm. and um really really give back if you like you know whilst I'm capable it's not about money this is about yeah. me um for John he wanted to do more sailing sailing yeah. was was his his love many years before he met me and and then just again life takes over so he said you know I want to cross an ocean um and you know long story short he signed up to do the clipper around around the world yacht mm -hmm. race but for me um my reason why uh, the uh, the on the back of my phone let me just clear that the background to my phone if you can see that oh yeah it's a place in Namibia uh, it's called Nankuse and it was well it, it, it's a reserve that manages wildlife in Namibia it does a lot of uh, animal research and we wanted to volunteer there for some time <laughs> so that I put on day one of my course before we'd left our jobs or even thought it was possible, I put that as the background to my phone and it's still yeah. there now. Um, because that, looking at that every day was, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do yes. that. I'm gonna have time, not just to do a week or two weeks, but to go do a few months there. And so that drove me. And then for John, it was Clipper. It was Clipper mm. around the world, signing up, signing up to, to, to sail around the world uh, and having that as a date as well, because yes. they only do it every two years. So it was like 2017, and we started learning in 14. Um, wow. 2017, uh, he signed up to do that around the world. So there we go. Um, that drove us. That was about, we're going to do this. Property isn't easy. It's yeah. uh, challenging at times. Um, and then, of course, we're creating another, 
another business. We're creating our own business, which again has its own challenges too. So you go from the safe corporate world in a way to then going, what's a bank holiday? Yeah. <laughs> this is, <laughs> I, I work. It's Sunday, I who work knows? In, exactly, Sundays, weekends. So there's another challenge as well, but it's still worth it, absolutely worth it. And I think you know, this, this is what really struck out to me in your, in your book. And one of the reasons why I really yeah. liked it over other kind of books about different types of investing and different types of careers that I've, I've read, what this mm. really screams to me is before you go and embark on a property journey or any other type of career changing journey, mm. be very clear on why it is and be very clear on what steps yeah. you need to take to articulate the true why. Because like you say, mm. you people talk about, yeah, because I want more time with my family or because I want more money or because I want this to be able to buy a yacht or whatever. But like all of those things are valid, but like you say, it's about going to the next layer of detail and, and really knowing why mm. and the type of why that will actually get you up in the morning. The type of why that come on, someone came and threw cold yes. water at your face at five o'clock in the morning and said, yeah. oh, are you getting up to do this thing? You'd still go, yes. okay, that's fine. Yeah. And that's, yeah, indeed. If, that, indeed. if that isn't there in your head, if, if that isn't, motivating you then you have the wrong why and before you carry yeah. on down the journey you have to go and reassess the why because I yes. the whole reason for setting up this podcast is I personally don't think that the whole um born child school maybe university <laughs> work retire die mm -hmm. I don't think that has to be the only way to live if it's not right for you if it is right for you for example, um, my partner is a very kind of nine to five person um, and enjoys the big corporate world. And that's great because that's a conscious decision for her. And, and she enjoys that. Yes. yes. I maybe am not yes. so similar in that space. And therefore, instead of me blindly just following it and leaving a, leading a somewhat less fulfilled life, I'm, I'm questioning it and I yeah. just don't believe I'm the only one. Mm. And that's why I've set up this, mm. this podcast to show that there are lots of people yeah. who also think like this. Yeah. And if you think like this, it's yeah. okay. And what you said before about honesty with yeah. your employer, I think is really, really important because I mm. do the same. So yes. uh, if you, those of you who don't know me, I'm, I'm a consultant at Accenture, um, all views my own. Um, yeah. And I am totally honest about, you know, I've got this blog or I've got this YouTube channel. I tell everyone about the podcast. I, I, I've set up a fintech startup and I do yes. marketing yes. and everyone knows about this. Of course they know about it. I'm going to be honest yes. with them because that way I can put in the infrastructure to support me in the journey, just like you did at, yeah. at Lloyd's and yeah. at the NHS. And it is about inspiring other people. And that's partly why I wrote the book. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I wrote the book uh, while I was in Australia so you know this traveling you know going around the world and stuff that we ended up doing fairly quickly you know just gave us confidence and yes. um, I found that people looked on us as potential role models but also said to themselves ah oh, yes but I couldn't do it and I went well of course you can you know we're we're not special why not um, yeah so writing the book you know and talking on podcasts and things is all very well but writing a book mm. some, somehow just says look you know just go read it you know because that reason why is in it is within everybody you just yes. don't know it's there yet so for me I had to go back to my childhood and go well what did I love doing and mm -hmm. um, I was always part of the World Wildlife Fund and um, you know I, I love dogs and cats and you know I love animals and, and I thought oh yes but you know, is it is it something I could do um, if I had the time? Well, of yeah. course it is. And then when yeah. you start researching, you get excited. And mm -hmm. it's that, you know, when you, you're lo looking at something and thinking, oh, I want to do that. And I'm goosebumps already because that's what yeah. I did with that, that, that picture yeah. there. It was like, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do it. And it isn't about a holiday because a holiday, it's, you know, by the time you've unwound. <laughs> yes, you know, it's so weeks, true. Yeah, you've got to you've got to start winding yourself up again, and that dread on a Sunday, you know, thinking, oh, I've got to get, I've got to get ready for Monday and all that responsibility. You know, we have responsibility now, of course we do in our in our jobs, in our sort of business, but hey, we've got choices, and that's yes. the difference. We have a choice. We can live wherever we want to, as long as we've got technology and the internet. 
and communication it doesn't matter where we where we where we live um, and that suddenly opens up a whole world of possibilities um, and excitement really so that book was written in australia we were um, house sitting for somebody another really good way of making money mm. because we rented our house out and we were living yeah. in someone else's house for free so we were looking after someone's house I wrote the book because I had time I was in a different zone in terms mm. of being in beautiful Queensland near the sea I was ready I was ready yeah. to put this this down but put it down in a way as you said it's the, the title is called building your dream life mm -hmm. is where do you start there's plenty of books out there about property you know oh, how to do property and you can do it with no <laughs> money down and it's yeah. really easy it isn't easy so yeah. my book's got all the problems all of the ways we overcame things um and baby steps you know comfort zones and all that stuff that us corporate people understand you know so <laughs> it's all in there um and it's building your dream life, whatever that dream life might be, it, it is really possible. Um, and it's possible through property because property is an asset that can create an income, whether you're, whether you're awake or asleep or whether you're in the UK or, or abroad. Uh, it's a good asset to have in the UK. Yeah. I don't know about anywhere else in the world. I'm testing it out here in uh, Zanzibar. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, it's a, it's a dream life you're looking for. Yeah, yeah, I I agree. Um, was the pun on building your dream life? Building was that an intentional pun? Yes, good, intentional. Good yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, and each and chapter you... talks about foundation. You know, uh, different stages of building. Um, so yeah, there's a bit of a pun in there. <laughs> yeah, I, I enjoyed these. raising the roof. I, I enjoyed these. Um, oh. and, and and I think the whole, <laughs> the whole book is written in a very accessible way. And I'm not just saying that because because you've shared it to me and and because I um because i've reviewed it on amazon but i i genuinely i find it very accessible and even the numbers part which normally if i'm honest i struggle to follow these in in most investing guides i kind of skip over them um but yeah. you you've made yes. it extremely yes. accessible and you've made it very very honest to people mm. which i think also mm. reflects your coaching skills because you're also a coach as well right yes yes i have an online program of learning that i i set up before John went around the world because going around the world for 12 months I thought hang on a minute you know we've got a joint business together mm -hmm. I want to do something that's mine yeah. and I was teaching with half locally and um, I just loved it really loved doing that so I thought well this is something I enjoy doing I'm not doing it for the money um, mm -hmm. I'm going to create something that I can take with me. So online learning, but but then face to face coaching on Zoom. And Zoom was mm -hmm. new in those days, 2017. <laughs> um, so yes, I, I I do that because I really enjoy it. I do it a couple of days a week, and uh, it's it's very fulfilling and um, and and it makes a difference to people's lives. And I love that. <laughs> and you talk about sort of making it making it your own, and I sort of made a note here because. Working with your husband is an interesting choice because it's very much blurring those mm. boundaries between your home life and your your professional yes. life. How have you yeah. found working with your with your husband? Yes, um, mm, challenging, <laughs> especially early on, especially early on because he he gave up his job first. Yep. So he had pretty much 12 months where he had his little routine and he had his processes and he was, yep. you know, he had a desk in the sitting room and, and suddenly I give up my job and I go, right, okay, where's my desk and how are we going to work? <laughs> and we work in the same, we worked in the same room then and I'm like, that's not going to work. Yeah. <laughs> so I talk about it in the book, actually, we've got very different personality yeah. profiles <clears throat> and that, that's important to understand. And when we did that analysis together, it was okay, now I get it. I understand now why mm. certain things that I do frustrate him yes. and things that he does frustrate, you know, frustrate me. And what we did was to work out where do we, uh, where are our skills most valuable in our business? So for me, it's the people side. I love people. Mm. I, I love to teach people, but also I like to negotiate and, and do deals. Um, yeah. So a lot of this, you know, looking at properties, finding, oh. uh, finding out what the situation the vendor is, um, how do I negotiate the price so that it works mm -hmm. for us? That was very much my role initially. 
and then John would you know come in with the detail and the numbers and we go yeah that's going to work for us so yeah working together with your life partner is um, is clearly going to be a challenge and separating your personal life from your business life is really challenging yeah. uh, and we, we still we still challenge now you know because sometimes there's a lot going on um, mm. even if we're in Zanzibar we've got Four transactions happening at the moment and they're all frustrating us and um, you know it, it can get really hard mm -hmm. but again you've got to step back we go scuba diving let's go for a swim in the sea let's just have a day off <laughs> and yes. uh, yeah so we we try and separate our time out as best we can we've got different interests so we make sure that we continue our interests and that we're not actually in our you know each other's pockets the whole time that that's not going to work <laughs> i think it's really interesting as well that you say you've got very different whys right his is his is sailing yes. yours is conservation and animals i think even though you're working together and you're working um for ultimately the same goal which is affording yourself the freedom to be able to do these things for more than just like a, a holiday like you say or you know, 25 days a year yeah, yeah. um you, you've both very clearly got that buy-in as to the the why you're doing it and I think one thing that struck me both in the book and in everything you've just said there is you have a very deep self-reflection and a deep introspection mm. and you have a much deeper understanding of yourself and for you and mm. your husband of who you are and who each other are and how you can then fit those things together in a way that I think lots yeah. of people never question and therefore I think you have this yeah. more fulfilled life because you do more things consciously than a lot of other people yeah and I we're, don't know we're where more I was mature, going that, I think <laughs> you know <laughs> well I, let me let me help you there because I think you know I, I coach some 18 year olds believe mm. it or not so I've got mm. I've got people I've got people I coach who are younger than my kids um and I'm so I so love it because if you can get help people learn and and change the way of education because they don't teach this in schools yes. they really don't um, so if I can help younger people recognize um, that assets um, like cars, mm. your home, they're not assets, <laughs> assets yeah. that can create an income for you um, are true assets. Um, <clears throat> so there's, there's a lot of learning that I think needs to happen for people. And I touch on it in my book, you know, around how do you leverage debt, for example, and yes. for some people, debt is a scary thing. Certainly mm -hmm. my parents' generation was, oh, you don't want to ever be in debt. But for me and, and being an ex-banker as well, yeah. you know, I know that debt is actually quite good, especially if interest rates are low. Yeah. You've always got the risk that interest rates change. Of course you have. But if you can leverage debt so that you can then use that money to then create a much higher return, then obviously that's a good thing. So Rich Dad, Poor Dad is another book, Robert Kiyosaki, you know, that's been around for a long, long time, but I've never come across it. So that sort of opened my eyes up. My children have read it and, and I'm trying to, to help other people by coaching them through it in a way. Um, and, and it's a revelation to a lot of young people was, oh, okay, okay. So I don't, they don't have a huge amount of money, yeah. but people they know might have and you know, I use investor funds. I, I work with yeah. other people who've got money and who want to return on that. They're fed up with no savings, you mm. know, uh, interest rates in the bank, but they're scared of property. They wouldn't yeah. want to learn. So there are ways for young people to understand this stuff mm -hmm. and also to do it, even if you don't have a huge amount of savings yourself. So whilst we're mature, we've got a lot of skills from our jobs that we've done, which has made it, I think, made running a business a little bit easier for us. Yep. Um, it's not impossible to just do things, you know, just go much more slowly than we did. You don't have to do what we did in the pace that we did it. You can just say, let's start with one property. Very simple. Yeah. It isn't rocket science. Um, and there's huge demand out there, you know, for rental. And it's not going away. <laughs> no, not at all. And there's also the demand for people to look for alternative types of investment. Because, you know, mm. I don't see the 
banks yeah. improving their returns anytime soon, right? If your money is sitting in a savings account, no. newsflash, you're actually <clears> losing in terms of, you know, against inflation, you're mm-hmm. actually losing money. Newsflash, you know, yeah. lots of people don't even yes. realise this. They look and they go, well, it's yes, in a bank, so it's yes. safe. Picking up on yes. that point around banking, because you talk about so your, your ex-banking career and, and actually, um, mm. I'm sure people often ask you about the differences between the two, because ostensibly there are. But I'd be interested mm. to talk a bit more about the similarities between the two, because obviously having done 20 years of banking, it's not that this time mm. was wasted, but there's a <laughs> lot of transfer between the two. Yes. H- how have you found that transition or what similarities yeah. have you actually seen between the two well, careers? Yeah. It's great. I mean, I, I think I spent most of my time in corporate banking. So working mm-hmm. as the banker to businesses, um, yep. small businesses initially as an area director um, and then larger businesses. So I saw it from a bank's perspective mm. and we've got lots of rules and regulations. Um, <laughs> we want to safeguard our money. So it's all about risk. Yeah. Can, we, can we trust that this company and it was a lot of data, um, but it's also a people business, too. So being that side of the desk as a banker, I saw things very differently. Suddenly I'm, I'm the other side of the desk. Mm. I'm the business that I want, I want to borrow money. So I'm borrowing on a mortgage basis for property. Mm. Um, and that's you know, fairly straightforward because property in the UK has, has a good value and it tends to go up over the long term. So mortgages, not, not too difficult. Um, mm-hmm. But when it comes to bigger deals, as we were doing, we bought a 26 bed property, uh, property in Southampton that, you know, suddenly became a commercial purchase. Yeah. <laughs> not not based on mortgage. So suddenly it was OK. Now we've got to be able to write a business case, um, prove that we can create an income from this business. And it was a trading business. And I was straight back one side of the desk Mm. the other side of the desk going okay now I've got to convince the banker that I used to be that this is this is the way we're going to do it so so those skills were useful useful to understand why banks do what they do because it can be incredibly frustrating if you don't understand why they do what they do Um, it's uh, so that was useful Um, but I think the other thing about having that history And that experience was that investors trust me because Mm. they go, oh, you you worked for a bank for 21 years. You (laughs) You must know what you're doing. (laughs) Well, you must be trustworthy because, you know, you can't, you can't, you know, if you're working in banking at a senior level or any level, to be honest, you've got to, you've got to be trustworthy um, because you're looking after people's money at the end of the day. So, Mm. um, so yeah, I think that, that helps me with, talking to investors and being able to say, look, this is me, this is my career I've had. However, you know, I'm, I'm coaching people who haven't had that in their backgrounds. Yeah. Uh, and there are ways of showing people that you, you know what you're doing and that you've got, you've got experience. So, you know, I think it made it easier for us um, to raise money quite quickly and to convince people that it was worth lending money to us. And then after the first few deals, of course, they recognize that, okay, was more money that they wanted to then lend to us because they knew it was going to work um yeah so that banking thing is fine but i alluded to you know working for a safe corporate and being able Mm. to finish it you know on a friday and have the weekend without worrying you you know when you run your own business you don't have that so you've got responsibilities but hey you know i say to people I, i spent a lot of time helping lloyd's bank um you know, satisfy its shareholders, building their strategy and, yeah. and making sure their strategy was great. Now I'm doing it for my own strategy, for my own legacy, and for my own kids for the future. So the time we spend doing what we're doing is about our future, not about the bank, <laughs> the bank's future. And when I look at my pension, it probably was going to be pretty good. Yeah. Um, but hey, I've got no influence over that. So I've even taken my bank pension into a SAS pension, a small self-administered scheme, and I now manage that myself. And I'm, I know I'm in control. So, so that the flip side is responsibility, but also mm-hmm. control, and that's massive, absolutely massive. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's very true. I think there's lots of people that start their own business because they think that they want 
uh, you know, freedom from the corporate world that they want um, that that autonomy and that control. Where mm. I see a lot of people then struggle, which I'm interested to know if you have struggled with this but have overcome it, because I I get the vibe that you don't. It's not a problem from your book. Is um, mm. they then work 24 by seven, they end up actually making less money because they're then so mired in working all the time on it. Mm. They yes. then actually struggle to see the yes. wood from the tree. So the quality of their decision making goes down, which then pushes the cycle round again. Whereas what you're able yes. to do is draw a line yeah. in the sand, <laughs> step back and go, OK, let's look at this objectively. Yeah. Let's know where to draw the line. Is that something you've always known yeah. or is that something you've had to learn? No, no, we, we really need to learn that. And I think <clears throat> that was, again, my coach. Uh, and my mentor Simon was very very clear from day one that you don't well not many people want to create another job through yeah. property and it's so so easy to say well I tell you what I'll manage my own this first property myself because then I'll make more money and uh, then later on I'll get someone else to manage it for me but that's the hardest thing yeah. um, because you've then got to give up money <laughs> and it's harder so yeah. for, for us, I think, because we were working full time when we were learning, <clears throat> both of us just didn't have the time anyway to manage mm -hmm. a property. So we had no choice, but it also set the scene for us because of what we wanted to do later was, you know, we didn't want to have to answer the call because the Wi-Fi wasn't working or the toilet was blocked or whatever. We, we, never, we never wanted to even touch that stuff. Yeah. So it was easy for us, I think, for, for us to always say well our numbers have got to include management so mm -hmm. we'll find a property we'll we'll refurbish it we'll get it ready to rent and then we'll have somebody that's then going to manage the tenants you know the guests or whatever they might be the the, the house housemates as we call them the housemates <laughs> if they're the shared house um you know someone else can manage that but they need to be really good so our mantra of working with experts is is a big thing you know I don't want to be the person that is the best at managing an HMO a house of multiple occupation because I'd have to learn a huge amount I don't yeah. I don't need to do that because I know someone else who's got that knowledge mm. the same with the same with bookkeeping you know and stuff I don't want to have to do that stuff um just because I'm in business for myself doesn't mean to say I have to do it yeah. I just need to create enough income uh to pay somebody else to do it so we give away a lot of our money in that way. You know, we, we, we're we really happy to have experts um, do very well by working with us because our time is worth more. So people say, oh, you must be millionaires. No way. We don't have a massive portfolio. We only have like 12 properties. <laughs> uh, we have different businesses within those. Of course, we have a guest house business that's five properties. We don't own them all. Sometimes we rent them off people. Mm -hmm. so you don't have to have hundreds of properties to do well in this space you just have to have enough so yeah. for us enough was it enough so that we could do what we want to do uh, yes. of course we can grow stuff as we go along we can increase our portfolio in a coordinated way but enough for John to go around the world and for me to follow him was not a huge amount I can tell you <laughs> we rented yeah. our house out as well so we've got an income from our own home so don't think that you need a huge amount of money. Um, yeah. I think this this sort of ties back around perfectly because really what you're what I'm seeing here is that it's all about uh, everything comes back to knowing your why, and you yes. know what yeah. enough is. Or your your compass on enough yeah. is driven yes. by your why because that tells you where yeah. to where to draw the line. And if you've got that, mm. then you can have confidence in every other decision you make, because there is no point in you being a millionaire who is chained to their desk in Winchester and not able to do the things you want to do or can only do them for one week a year because you've just created yourself mm. another job. Yeah. Hang on. You yes. haven't achieved what you actually wanted to do. Why am I doing yes. this? You're back to where you started. Yeah. yeah. And I've got plenty of people that come and uh, have a chat with me and say, you know, I've been in this game for seven, eight, ten years in property, and I thought it would create my freedom, but I haven't been able to do that. 
So it's really interesting that I now coach people how to get yeah. systems, how to work with, again, people who can help them in a systemize their business, but also take a step back and actually yes. be happy to let go of some of that income because actually your time is worth more. And people just don't, they don't really get their head around it. They do need to have somebody to just hold their hand sometimes to go, yes, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay yes. to do this. Um, so systems like we use LastPass, we have, we have uh, uh, Asana as a team tool for people that are working in our business. Um, so taking control, you know, for a lot of people in business, they can lose control easily because yeah. it can be overwhelming when they get to a certain point. So that is another massive lesson is, you know, you've got to then systemize your business so that you don't have this uh, out of control stress mm. in your life. I had that a bit when John was going around the world because we weren't, we hadn't systemized stuff. Yeah. So we took a bit of a risk, mm -hmm. but it gave us that knowledge of, okay, we survived. We, you know, the business was okay, but we weren't really on top and in control. So, so again, work with other people who have done it, other people who can give you the top tips, who can tell you the mistakes they made. Um, and that's really important in life. It doesn't matter what stage you're at and how long you've been doing whatever you've been doing. Always find somebody who's a step ahead of you, who's, mm. who's got that, that dream that you want. Yeah. Go work with them, phone them up, you know, chase them. I get people phoning me up finding me on social media and saying can we have a chat and, and I'm always happy to have half an hour you know chat and open someone's eyes up a bit because it is wood for trees you know we yeah. know that you know that yeah. in your job Accenture you know yeah. change change is the hardest thing in life um, absolutely yeah so find someone that can help you take that step into that next next place and then off you go and that, that is a beautiful place to, to round up. Um, I just have one last question for you, which is um, you are indeed in Zanzibar. So big question yes. is, what's next for you? And I guess the scenery <laughs> might, uh, might be giving it away. Well, what's next for us? It, it's interesting because we've done some stuff in, in our lives and we've traveled across Africa and COVID gave us another adventure by, mm. by importing our car to Africa. And, you know, we've, we've, we've done stuff and we're, we're now sitting and thinking, what is next? And you do need to take time to just go, let's have a think. So we're renting a house here for six months. We have a project out here. So we have a property project, that's work. So we've bought land, we're building nine apartments wow. over here. And we're, we, you know, we're going to make that a great success because it's a really good, really good time to be investing over here. Um, so we, we've got to see that through. But again, we've done it so that we don't physically need to be here. Uh, we're working with other people. Um, but it's such a beautiful place. It's so unspoiled that we thought we'll, we'll stay here for a period of time, enjoy the environment, learn scuba. We've both been yeah. doing scuba diving. Wow. And um, there's a whole load of things that we want to have time to do. And then, and then what? We're not sure, actually. You know, we're going to um, we're going to make some decisions. We've still got some travelling in us. Still going to maybe go up to Serengeti with the car, nice. uh, explore a bit more with the Volvo. Um, but I think we we got tired. You know, we we've done yeah. a lot of that, and yeah. you know, I like my coaching, and I was finding I wasn't really having enough time for that. So mm. we've got stability and time, and that's important for everybody is to sometimes just sit and allow that time and that um, relaxation to actually go on in your head and go okay now I now I've got some ideas mm -hmm. um, you know we live busy busy lives and I know that, that corporate world I was in I never had time to think um, and uh, so that's important for us and that's what we're doing um, Brilliant. That's very exciting. I think that's I think that's really great that you've been honest and said, yeah, right. Like we're we're just taking a bit of a reset. Uh, I, I wrote a blog recently called uh, Your Brain is Not an iPhone, which is around a similar principle, which is uh, we expect our devices, whilst we're trying to plug them in and charge them, we're expecting to use them as well. We therefore expect yeah. the same of our brain. We're expecting to try and recharge yes. it, but also want it to push yeah. on to the next thing. And sometimes mm. you're in exactly the position you are saying, okay, we're just going to mm. do a little bit of recharging and then that will produce yeah. the next thing 
yeah. and it looked like maybe some traveling but looked like some we don't know and we're okay to embrace yes, we don't know we don't know we might do some new stuff i think we have missed friends you know we've missed seeing people during covid yeah. and so you know we're hoping that people can come and travel out here and you know we'll go see people in other countries now we're vaccinated as well but there's a i'm um, just touching on that point there is a really good youtube to watch to watch there's a ted talk ted talk on um um why being bored mm. helps helps your brain be creative yeah so i can't remember exactly what the title is but it's about boredom and these days even kids don't have time to be bored you know because they're on devices and so I was fascinated by the science behind, you know, make sure you've got time to be bored because that's when creativity happens. Uh, so, yeah, that's a, that's a good message to send people as well. But I'm always happy to, to chat to anyone if anyone wants to have a talk to me about what they want to do. If properties of interest, you're going to put lots of lots of sort of links in, aren't you, the show notes? Yes, so um, in the in the description uh, will be a link to your website, a uh, link to the Audible version as well, a link to the book, and um, you've sent me some links to add, add in as well. Um, I'll also link to your yeah. LinkedIn, if that's all right. Yes, um, absolutely, if, yes. You'll find me on social media. You'll see a lot of, there's not many Bronwen Verncombs <laughs> on social media. It's a um, unique name. There's also some training there. So there's a one, there's a link there where you can watch a one hour training um, on, you know, where do you start in property? And you'll find, you know, people who are listening to this who don't know anything about property might just go, oh, I'll just watch that. So that's yeah. what I encourage you to do. Maybe watch that as a first port of call. In fact, if it's particularly if you don't know what it is, watch it because it might actually yes. just completely change your perspective. So, yeah, absolutely. Indeed. I encourage Indeed. everyone to, to go and do it. And I, as someone who's kind of had a property in the back of their mind when I first read your book, and now I'm very much, yeah. uh, very much convinced uh, I can I can highly recommend both both book and the other one hour training. So brilliant. brilliant. Bronwyn, thank, thank you, you so much for your time. I'm very jealous of your, your background. I'm conscious I stand between you and the swimming pool, so I will I'll wrap it up <laughs> Indeed. here. But you've been a wonderful guest. Thank you so much. Really great, great to, to chat to you. Lovely. Thanks, Charlie. It's uh, it's been brilliant and I love your podcasts and I'll keep following you as we as we move around.